Hi everyone, it's Moody Boo and I am back with another tag video. So I was tagged by Tim over at Tunes Reviews. I'll put a link below. And thank you, Tim. I appreciate the tag. Um, Tim and I have known each other for a long time. We are both old timers in the fragrance community, even though he's very young. He's been doing this since he was very young. I'm very old and I've been doing this since I was very old. <laughs> I started this late in the game. I think it was 45? 46, something like that, when I first started reviewing on YouTube. So that was, let's see, it would have been 2010, 2009, something like that. Anyway, um, and I had a very small collection at that time. <laughs> it could fit on this little glass table that I have, all of my perfumes. So this is Toons Reviews Holy Trinity Tag. And I'm just going to go ahead and tag people at the very beginning of this video. And I may end up tagging some at the end as well. But Joss Jane, you always tag me. It's your turn. Tag your it. <laughs> I really want to see what uh, your Holy Trinity perfumes uh, would be. And Ben over at Centaur, I would sure love to see you do this tag as well. Joss and Ben, boom, you're it. <laughs> so, okay, and I'll put their links below as well. I'm getting better about it. So this has seven questions in it. And you pick one perfume and answer all seven of the questions for each perfume. And I need to get started because blah, there's like story time stuff in there. And you know how I get when I start talking about the past. <laughs> so, okay, first perfume. So the first perfume that I chose um, and then I'll, I'll go through the questions. These are perfumes that leave a big impression on you. Um, and that is Lullabo's Labdanum 18. Oh. <sighs> ah, mm, man, <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm wearing something else today. I'm actually wearing House of Siage, so I did put it on my hand. This is a sexy, sweet soft, um, sophisticated, labdanum, animalic kind of a perfume. It's a, one of the few animalic perfumes I think you could wear in professional settings, to be really honest. It's super, super versatile for being sexy. And it is sexy to me, but it's also sophisticated. But all the edges are real. Okay, why am I doing a review? This is a tag. Shut the hell up and answer the damn questions. <laughs> so let's do that. So the first question I've already kind of answered, which perfume left a lasting impression? And Labdanum definitely did. I have this in solid. I have it in a travel spray and a little, came in a little travel spray, you know, container thing. And um, I have it in oil. Yes, I adore this perfume. And the question is, what's the best memory you have attached to this perfume? Now, I have a caveat, of course. Um, I have so many perfumes that unless I went back to when I wore signature scents, I don't necessarily have a lot of specific memories while wearing the perfume, but the perfume does invoke memories. So I don't know how much of a stretch Tim will let me do on that, but that's what I'm going with. So there you go. So this one reminds me of <laughs> over 30 years ago, the way my husband first looked at me um, when I waited on him as a bartender in this, this bar that I worked at, he had just gotten his wisdom teeth pulled. He was still all swollen. He used to give himself his own haircuts. 
So we had Frankenstein bangs is what I called him. And uh, he'd just gotten off work, so he was kind of greasy and dirty, you know, because he's a heavy equipment mechanic. But none of that mattered. When he was sitting down and I brought him and his friend a pitcher of beer they had ordered, and I looked down at him and he looked up at me in such a way. He's got these very, very light blue eyes and very long, dark eyelashes. For one thing, it reminded me of one of my crushes, Michael McDonald from the Doobie Brothers, when he used to sit at the piano. He'd sit there and sing and play the piano, either looking down or he'd have his eyes closed. But when he looked up, it took my breath away. And that's what happened when my husband looked at me. He gave me a look that was like, oh my God. My dream girl is living. It was just such this look of awe he had on his face. And I was all like, and that's what this reminds me of. It just had this soft, sweet sexiness that was just coming off of him in light waves that just made my head spin and my heart explode. And I haven't been the same since. <laughs> So I love this perfume. Absolutely love it. Next question. The next question is, name a fictional character who might wear this scent. And that one took me a while, but I thought, Tarzan. Tarzan, after he leaves the jungle, when he becomes Lord Greystoke and um, joins society, high society, I picture him wearing this, not necessarily wearing this perfume, but smelling like this perfume. He'd have that underlaying layer of animalic that he wouldn't be able to clean off because he had been raised in the jungle and lived the jungle for so long that you wouldn't be able to take that out of his pores and his just his entire being. So he would have some animalic. But he was sexy as hell now. I've had a crush on Tarzan since I was a kid. <laughs> And it had nothing to do with the loincloth, believe it or not. <laughs> Everything to do with him swinging through the trees, talking to animals. I was a big tomboy and yet a girly girl. So I had this kind of split personality and he fulfilled both of their fantasies. The next question is, name a concert you would wear this perfume to. I think I would wear this, even though I've never seen them, I would love to see them, is uh, afro Kelt sound system. I'm not even sure they're still together, but I love them. They are just this international sounding with like African rhythms. And um, I think there's some Celtic singers and it's just this wonderful merging of different cultures to make this incredible music. I'll try to remember to put a link below to one of my favorite songs of theirs like Release or Seed is really good. There's a lot of them, but anyway, yep, that would be the concert I would wear it to. And the next question is a place you would wear this perfume to, you would travel to, to wear the, and wear this perfume. And that one took me a while too, but I thought Johannesburg, South Africa, but not to go on safari, but to go dancing. Because there'd be a lot of animal scents out there. Now I know there'd be a lot of very unpleasant scents, but when you get down and, and really smell the musk of, of an animal, a furred animal, um, it can be quite lovely. And when you refine it and add some really lovely notes to accompany it, like this perfume does, then it becomes sexy. So I just, I don't know, I could see wearing this going clubbing down in Johannesburg, South Africa. <laughs> Next question is a song that correlates with this perfume. And that one took me a while too, but I would have to go with Enigma Sadness. I love Enigma. And Sadness, not because of the song, actually, I don't even know what the words are of the song because it's not in English for the most part. And it's so beautiful and it's it's so moody, intimately moody. 
And that's kind of the way this, this perfume makes me feel, it makes me feel um, intimate and sexy and a little primal, <laughs> a little mammalian. <laughs> so, yeah. And the last question is, is this going to be a perfume that stays in your repertoire? And absolutely. I have it in many forms and I will, if I get low on any of them, I will absolutely refill it. Yep. I adore this perfume. Super unisex too. Next perfume. The next perfume is a favorite, a desert island perfume, just like Labdanum by Lelabo is also a desert island perfume. And, but this is also one my husband loves and it's Rouge Number no. 2 by Mikalef. Now, it, it's not, I don't think, in production anymore, but you can still find it. I know you can find Rouge Number no. 1, which I didn't care for much all over the place, but Rouge Number no. 2, this is just a sweet, animalic like castorium little hint hint of fruity floral um juiciness to it oh my god it is stunning so let's go over the questions for rouge number two so the best memory i attach to rouge number two is going to the Rocky Horror Picture Show when I was a kid, well, when I was a teenager, um, from about 16 to 19. I went like 16 times. <laughs> I loved Frankenfurter. I loved Tim Curry as Frankenfurter. Actually, that was my first real taste of doing serious makeup, you know, because Frankenfurter had some pretty intense makeup. And uh, um, got me on the path to becoming a cosmetologist once I graduated was because of starting with my Frankenfurter makeup. <laughs> I had a friend named Sharon that knocked it out of the park. She had been like over a hundred times to it. She was the one that turned me on to it actually. She had the entire outfit, makeup, the mannerisms, everything was perfect. And she was so nice because she took me the first time and showed me, no, you don't sit in the back with the virgins, even though you are one. <laughs> You're going to sit up front with me and we're going to torment everybody behind us. And I was like, cool, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> and then I started doing my own Frankenfurter. I guess Frankenfurter was so sexy because he was so strange, but he was so comfortable in his weirdness. And the way he looked and the way he dressed and danced and sang, I was hooked. <laughs> Absolutely hooked. So I guess this reminds me of that because this is, this is almost blatantly sexy, but at the same time, it's smooth and it's seductive. And you don't even realize that you have been seduced until you're already in bed with it. <laughs> There's no backing out once you get in. Hmm. I don't know if I like that wordage, but you know what I mean. So this is, yeah, Rocky Word Picture Show. Next question. Because it is sweet and smooth, yet sultry, I picture Epiphany uh, Lisa Bonet played her in the crazy movie called Angel Heart with Robert De Niro, Lisa Bonet, and Mickey Rourke. She just played this young, beautiful, innocent, yet old soul kind of a, a character in Epiphany. And I picture her wearing this because she didn't have to try it all to seduce. Um, she lured without even attempt or really recognition of it, but she still ended up getting caught up in the, the riptide of the consequences of her soft, sweet sexiness. So it was, it's an intense movie and it's a wild part she had to play. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, there you go, epiphany. And because this is sultry and sexy, had to be Sade. I have loved Sade um, since I was 20, 21, something like that. She has 
the sexiest voice I've ever heard. Barry White, pfft, who's that? Chris Isaac, yeah, whatever. It's like, no, Sade. She has the voice of hot naked love. <laughs> Oh my God, I love her songs and I love her voice and I love her, the way she looks and the way she sings. She's amazing. So yeah, shot a concert. Now a place that I would wear this to, uh, to travel to and wear it, um, it'd have to be Paris. It really would. And I'd be torn between wearing it to go see a burlesque show, a professional burlesque show. And I'd be torn between that and going to the Louvre. <laughs> I have always had this weird crush on Leonardo da Vinci. I just think his mind was way ahead of its time. And he just, I don't know, he just, he just is amazing. And so to wear a sexy perfume to go see the Mona Lisa would just be the shit ski to me. <laughs> I would love that. I would love that. I think I've already talked myself into going to the Louvre. <laughs> Sorry, burlesque, but yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. A song associated with this, I'd have to go with like either a Sade, uh, No Ordinary Love, <sighs> beautiful song, or maybe a Seal, A Prayer for the Dying. I know that sounds like it's, it's, kind of, you know, you could use any seal song though. Kiss by a Rose, um, Crazy, Sexy, Soft, Yet Sensually Strong. I am really on an S kick. Jeez, I don't know what's going on. I have a thing. Have you noticed yet? <laughs> I do weird things with letters. <laughs> like I, I do, I write perfumes with F letters. Festive, and frisky and formal. <laughs> so now I'm on S today. Next question. And it will definitely remain in my arsenal as long as I can possibly have it. I, I have a decant of it, but mm, I'm, I'm a little nervous about wearing it. I usually only wear it for my husband at this point because he likes it lots. Last perfume. The last perfume is one I always forget I have, but as soon as I rediscover it, I wear it for like a week or two because it's incredibly beautiful. And you just never hear anything about it. It's a kind of an older perfume, but oh, I still love it. This is my second bottle. And this is Scent Intense by Costume National. I adore this perfume. I absolutely adore it. Oh, this reminds me of a library, an old Gothic library. It has a hint, just a hint of sweetness, but it's more warm and woody and a hint leathery and just the most subtle hint of tart in there. But it just makes me think of an old Gothic library with leather chairs using kind of a, a light citrusy, maybe wood polish the day before that you just barely get some brightness from it. And it's ambery too. So that's where the warmth I think comes in. And, and it, it doesn't have citrus in it, but I think it's the tea note that's in there that gives it this brightness. I love this stuff. I absolutely love it. It's very unisex too. So the question is, a uh, memory that you would associate with this perfume. That was easy for me. Um, I went to this very old high school and actually it was my mother's alma mater and my mother is about to turn 87. So it was a minute ago and it wasn't new when she went there. So there's parts of this school that were built and a big part of the school was built, I don't know, probably pre-World War II. And it's very Gothic and almost looks like an old church, but it's huge. Anyway, but then this library, this, this school was not big and open. 
lots of little nooks and crannies. And I think I was a cat in another life because I love little cubby holes and little alcoves and little spaces. Anyway, and this had a lot of those kind of hallways that just went off and then you took another hallway to get to this one gymnasium way off over here and then, you know, and I love that. Well, this library was built about the same way. It was two story, I think, but it had a lot of little, the way they had the book racks, there was all kinds of little corridors and corners and that had little cubby holes in there that you could sit there and we'd sit there and smoke pot, you know? <laughs> and, uh, um, or I just would go up there by myself and grab a book and sit there and read in the corner, you know, on the floor. Or sometimes they'd have a little table there, but there was all these little alcoves and little, little hiding places you could go and be alone. And I loved it there. I was so comfortable there. Just this, this, wonderful gothic private um hidden magical memory for me is what it induces and i just love it for that i just love this perfume super super unisex too oh, anyway and affordable next question and i guess because it induces magical library secret you know memories for me i think of a grown-up harry potter wearing this <laughs> I do. I picture him wearing this and um, you got the magic and he's all grown up because there's sophistication with it as well. And um, just he'd be in the library a lot, I think, reading and learning and yeah, so grown up Harry Potter. So what concert would you wear this to? Well, I have worn this to a concert at uh, the Gorge at George and it was uh, Sticks. Kansas, Blue Oyster Cult, and Peter Frampton. There might have been one more in there, just some of my favorite um, 70s bands. And I, I grew up with those bands. So. And if you've never, ever seen anything about the Gorge at George, you should Google it. It's the Columbia River is right there. It's right on the banks of the Columbia River. And it is just absolutely eaten out this path and made this huge canyon and where the gorge is where the the concert part is it's it's lower than the other side so it just leaves this amazing backdrop and you're there as the sun goes down and you get to see the sun go down behind the band and the bands never have anything on stage banners or anything behind them they use the the scenery the natural scenery as their backdrop usually and my my husband's company had box seats because right in front of the stage you had sitting area which i wouldn't want to be at even though you were closest no that's not the best view a little farther up the hill because it went there was the stage here and then it went back up this hill um where everybody sat and right in the front right below the stage were the seats right above that about level with the stage were the box seats which was just really a bar around some some chairs and a table and that's what my husband's company owned and if one of their customers didn't want the tickets um, then they went to the staff and so we got dibs on the rock and roll ones because he works with a lot of country and western fans so that worked out <laughs> and you have a concierge that would bring you you know drinks or food or whatever and then behind the box seats is just this big grassy hill that had dips in it and that's where everybody kind of the 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 cheap seats were, but they had the best view because they were highest up looking down on the band. Yes, they were farthest away, but they got to see more of that canyon beauty that in the Columbia that is just gorgeous. So um, anyway, we went to this band or, or this uh, collection of bands. And when you hear Sticks play Grand Illusion Live at the Gorge or Kansas do Dust in the Wind or to hear Peter Frampton do Do You Feel Like We Do with the Gorge during sunset as the backdrop <sighs> or Blue Easter Cult doing the Reaper. I, it, it was It was magical. It was absolutely magical and this was the scent I happened to be wearing that day. 
and it was years ago. A place you would travel to wearing this perfume, I would travel. <laughs> I'm a huge Dracula fan. I would travel to Transylvania. I would want to go between seeing like the black church, very gothic old church and then going to Dracula's castle, of course. Oh my God, that's on my bucket list. I want to do that so bad. And a song that I associate with this, um, it's a band I just discovered in the last couple of years. Um, and their music is so cool. They do this throat singing and they're from Mongolia and they're called The Who. Not to be mistaken with Pete Townsend and Roger Daltrey's The Who. This is the H-U, The Who. And they did a song called Wolf Totem. And Jacoby Shaddix from uh, Papa Roach sang on it because they didn't sing any English in the original version, but he came on and he was, he was singing some English with them and it was really cool. I just love the song, but it's very dark and it's very primal and it just, I just love it. I just love it. I'm really getting into rock from different um, places. Right now, Mongolia and Iceland are blowing my mind. <laughs> and yes, that will, costume national scent and tints will absolutely stay in my, my um, collection for as long as I can find it. So, okay, well, Tim, thank you for the tag. I think I made it through all. I don't think I missed a question. So, um, anyway, don't forget Joss and Ben. You two next. <laughs> and anybody else that wants to do the tag, it was a really fun tag to kind of think about memories associated with scents and where you'd wear them and what would be the occasion. And I really enjoyed doing this tag. So, you know, um, Tara at Olfactor Files, if you want to do it, or Corrine at Olfactive Stories, if you want to do it, or Oxa at Sniffing Fragrance, if you want to do it, or my girl Paola, how about you do this tag too? Bam! There you go. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you, Tim, for the tag. And, um, yeah, I'll see you soon. And don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell and comment if you want. If you don't, it's all good. I still love you. Use your own nose. Happy 2021. Peace.